Good morning. Welcome back to Indulgence with Dr. T. Uh, this morning for you, I'm going to be trying mainly uh, the different lip colors that I got from the most recent um, Divine Rose collection release. Um, before I do that, before I get into those, I wanted to put on my eyeshadow today. And actually, what I want to do is use the little mini mothership palette, the one called Gold Opulence, which just reminded me of the color story for um, everything that's come out of the Divine Rose collection. And so if you already have this, this might be one that you might want to use with a lot of the same products. So I figured I'd just use that one um, this morning for you guys so you can see what that looks like. Uh, and just for comparison, so you can see what it looks like next to one that's actually in, a palette that's actually in the collection. So this one is the Rose Decadence. And then this one is the Golden Opulence, and hopefully I can get those side by side. So of course they're not exactly the same, uh, but they're just they're rem reminiscent of one another to me at least. And so I figured I would use this one today as though it were part of the collection just to see how the lip colors go with it if you already have this one. All right. So. First, I'm going to get started with my primer. I got this uh, sample size Tatcha Silk Canvas Liquid Primer. I'm going to give that a try. So before I get started, I'm going to do um, some comparison swatches for you between these two palettes since they are, to me, pretty similar. But so you can see what the color differences are. I can't recall how I was holding it up before, but... As I hold them next to each other like so, I'm pretty much going to be comparing the colors as they lay in the pan because um, those seem to be the colors that kind of correspond to each other. So like the lower left is the um, gold in both. That sort of deep matte shade is the lower right in both, so on and so forth. So that's how I'll be swatching them side by side so you can see what they look like just on the arm. First, I'll start with the Golden Opulence, and the first color I'll use is the Eternal Opulence. That was that first you know, champagne looking color right there. I'll start here. I think I'm going to run out of space if I try to do them too close together. So that's that color. And this one is Pink Champagne. So obviously, more pink. Not exactly the same. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, down to Prosperity and Golden Opulence. That's a matte shade, and this is Hedonistic Rose. You can see that. Next is gonna be. Tranquility from Golden Opulence. And that will be next to Peach Dusk. And next is Moon Phase from Golden Opulence. And that will be next to Scandalous. There's that. Hopefully you guys can see these okay. Alright, so next will be Lotus Lux from the Golden Opulence. That's a beautiful color. And that'll be next to Fuchsia Flame, which I actually got that out correctly this time. I keep stumbling over that. 
that and, and as you as you recall the um fuchsia flame to me seems kind of like a it's got a blue shift to it uh, whether or not you can see that <laughs> and then lastly gold fortune which is super gold next to golden honey from the rose Hmm, so I'd say this one's more like honey. Well, you know, <laughs> that's what it was called. More honey color than this one. It's more like a bright, you know, saturated gold. Um, so there. So like I said, the colors are not exactly the same, but like the color story is kind of similar, at least to me. Um, and so I just thought that it would, if you already have that and you're considering um, buying one of the rose uh, collection palettes that you might want to see what these look like kind of side by side um, see how different the color stories are so I think they're definitely different enough that they're worth um, getting both but if you have one then um, and you're satisfied with the um, the uh, looks that you can get from that palette you may not necessarily need to get the other one all right so there's that so now I'll actually get started with my makeup. <laughs> All right, so first I'm gonna start with the Tatcha um, Liquid Canvas Primer, which I got in a little sample size here. I have liked the Silk Canvas Primer that is on the solid. So I figured I wanted to try what this liquid is like. And just so, let's see, I've used it quite a bit, but just so you can see what that looks like in comparison to the liquid. Oh, that feels really nice. Oh. Oh, that really does feel <laughs> like, um, almost feels like baby powder, I want to say. It's very soft. Oh, I like that. Uh, so it is very reminiscent of the um, of how the solid feels. Um, one thing I like about the solid is that it really seems to um, smoothen my pore area. I'll be interested to see if that's how the liquid um, performs as well. It doesn't feel like it will, like sort of fill in that sort of pore area, just because it's of course liquid and probably will more settle into those areas instead of. Uh, being able to sort of fill them instead of like you know what I'm saying they'll fill them instead of settling into them or whatever but we'll see uh, but I do like it feels nice I know not too much of a cast like a white cast or anything left on my face except for these little linty things so today for all right so for today, um, what I wanted to use for foundation is my Bare Minerals Foundation Stick, which I really, really like. The color that I use is Cedar, and I'll have some of my other um, foundation shade um, matches or you know alternatives down in the description box for you so you can see what other colors I wear in case you're close to my skin tone. Um, my usual disclaimer, these are not makeup tutorials. If you were led to believe that this was a tutorial, I apologize. That was not my intent. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I love playing with luxury brand makeup and that's just what I like to do. Um, and the purpose of my channel is just to show you what different things look like on my skin tone just because there isn't a whole lot of uh, YouTubers that are about my shade that use the same products that I like to use. Uh, or the same brands and so this is just an opportunity for you to see what those different products look like on someone that's my skin tone so if you're similar to me in um shade range reference whatever then you can um at least see what things look like on our skin tone uh, so um yeah so i put you know several dots of the Bare Minerals foundation stick around my face and now I'm just kind of blending that out everywhere with this brush and this is my Sonia G base one brush just going back over areas 
is where I feel like I didn't put quite enough. And then of course the areas where I'm hyperpigmented. Since, um, just because I like this particular stick and formula and the uh, coverage that it gives me, I'm using that for my little hyperpigmented areas as opposed to using the concealer like I usually would do. I am going to use concealer, but I just wanted to get that little super dark area really well with the foundation too. And so just blending that out. And then that way, you know, that avoids that different tone that you might sometimes see if I put a concealer there instead of the um, foundation. So I really like it for that. But yeah, one of the reasons I really love this particular foundation stick is like it's really smooth when it goes on. Um, of course it's solid, but once it contacts my skin at least, it seems to kind of melt into an almost formula, um, almost a liquid formula. And if it um, goes on, it spreads pretty easy. Um, and gives you a nice natural finish, very close to looking like your own natural skin. So yeah, I really like this Grim Minerals foundation stick. It's one of my favorite foundation sticks. So basically that one and the uh, Tom Ford foundation sticks are, I think, probably my two favorite foundation sticks. And I forgot to wet my sponge, but that's okay. We shall press on, however. I forget how stiff these things are when they're not wet or before you start using them. Definitely more comfortable when it's wet. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, oh. And, oh, I didn't tell you what this was. This was my Hourglass Concealer in uh, Velvet is the color. I gravitate between this one and I think this, the other color that I use is called Mocha, I want to say. And I like them both. I think this one's probably a little bit um, brighter than the other. And I probably need that today. Or um, This one's probably a little bit more golden tone than the Mocha, which is more neutral, I think. Um, but I feel like I have not been sleeping well, and so I need that little extra bit of brightness under the eyes today. So there's that. I'm just making sure that those are blended in together pretty well. All right. Wonderful. As usual, my Fenty, my Fenty um, eyeshadow primer. Is, as you guys know, my favorite. I need something a little softer <laughs> to blend them out with. And my unused, not broken in very well, so let me it sponge. So I decided to pat that in there. A nice smooth base to do my eyeshadow my mirrors out. So let's see, I will attempt to use all the colors in this palette for you guys. I'm gonna start with the Lotus Luxe, the more pink color in the palette. And I'm just gonna put that as like the main sort of central shade on my lids. Here is a very beautiful color. Again, it reminds me a lot of all the other um, colors in this rose collection. Sort of pinky, peachy sort of feel. Um, for the like medial aspects of my eyes, I'm going to go with that middle color moon phase. And then for the actual inner corner, I want to use uh, the eternal opulence color for the actual inner corner. I was gonna go with the gold, but I think I wanna do the gold along the bottom lash line. And usually like with these metallic type colors, I um I do put them on with my finger first just because I get the most color impact that way. And then I'm gonna use a brush for the mattes. So this is my Sonia G Jumbo Blender. I'm gonna use that um Prosperity color out in the corners. And I'm doing my usual thing where I, I have tons of other mirrors in front of me that I could be using that I'm much bigger, but I insist on, for whatever reason, using the tinier. It's actually not a very tiny mirror. It's a pretty big, pretty big mirror. Um, well, I'm not blinding you, but yeah, pretty big mirror. Um, but yeah, it's definitely easier to use the one that's like already standing in front of me. <laughs> 
And, you know, as like I said, I am no makeup, you know, instructor, I'm not a makeup artist. I just do what works for me and get my makeup on fairly quickly in the mornings. This particular morning, I'm not actually going anywhere or doing anything. I just happen to wake up a couple hours before the rest of the family. So I felt like playing with my makeup and having a little me time. And so I figured I'd spend it with you guys. But yeah, I'm not teaching you how to put on makeup. You, I, I, am, I am in the habit of explaining what it is that I'm doing just because I'm a teacher, like by nature. <laughs> and so um, that's just what I do. And so I'm happy to do so, but I'm not telling you to do your makeup like this. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I just do what works for me. I'm going to use I actually don't know what brush this is. I got it in like a some kind of subscription box and I really like it for like keeping very diffuse coloring in the crease. And so this is a Farrah 35E, I think. Um, I'm gonna try this color for like the inner portion of my crease. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna try not to get too much and try to keep it close to close to the lid not go too far out so I don't I didn't really go all that far out with the uh, prosperity color I'm gonna try to keep it nice and light all right that's not too bad yeah okay same thing on this um and this color in particular I probably wouldn't use on a normal basis just because it is so light I think it would make a great transition color for um, someone who's a medium skin tone or lighter skin tone but I just wanted you to see what this color actually looks like when it's um, on the lid wouldn't perform so just so you can see it and it's it's not terrible it's not too far off from my skin tone so it's usable so yeah it's not too far off from my skin tone so it is usable here in the crease I just typically go with a darker color in general for my for my sort of transition shade and i'm gonna go in a little bit with prosperity again just to deepen that and blend those two together a little bit more and then kind of diffuse this outer area as well okay i'm gonna use my bk beauty smudger brush uh the 204 i really should probably know these names by now and i'm gonna use this along the bottom lash line just curious to see what it looks like. I don't usually usually use like a color that is similar to, you know, the sort of outer crease color along the bottom lash line. But like I said, I'm going to try and use all the colors in here. So we're gonna see what that looks like. That's not terrible. Not my thing. I'm getting makeup on my contacts. Oh yeah, I'm trying to use my contacts more often now, so I actually see what I'm doing especially if I'm not going to work and don't feel like I need to wear glasses that day I would like a pencil brush to use for the uh, inner corner area and I told you guys I was going to use whatever moon something moon phase no I'm lying <laughs> I'm gonna use it's eternal opulence uh, this lighter shade up here um, for the inner corner color, trying not to make a huge mess. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so this gold color, I mean, I like the color. I think I normally would end up using it more on the sort of inner sides. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move this or put some more of it right here. I'm not going to remove what I had on previously, but I'm going to take some of that darker matte color and kind of blend that with that color. Kind of darken it, but keep it a little bit golden, but um, make it more of a color that does blend in with that outer V color, just because that's what I like it to look like. So this kind of goes from a light champagne color to a gold and then like a golden brown and I like that again not a makeup artist I just do 
what I like. This might be some kind of, you know, faux pas. And makeup, you know, people who actually know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I just do what I like. As long as it comes out how I like it, that's all I care about. All right, so there are all six colors on my eyeballs. All right, let me get on some eyeliner and then I'll move on to the lipstick swatches for you guys. Let's use this, the only one I use my Fenty, I think this is Space Cookie. Yeah, which is a more brown color for the eyeliner. Excuse me while I make terrible faces. Don't do that. I'm not sure somehow it like destroys the elasticity around your eyes. Again, these are not tutorials. Don't do what I do. This just makes it easier for me. But I do recognize it's not necessarily good for your eye to do that. Oh boy. Okay, that's decent. I want to make sure that this is all smoothed out. Sometimes when I do that, I use my fingers to tight line for my eyeliner. I end up like leaving my own fingerprints <laughs> like in my concealer or my foundation. So I try to I'm gonna go back and kind of straighten that up a little bit. All right, and then of course my uh, Dark Star Pat McGrath Mascara, which I I don't think I've used another mascara in quite a while since getting this one. I absolutely love it. Although one thing I have noticed is like if I've had it on for like super long, like I put it on at seven o'clock in the morning and then it's like nine o'clock at night, it does start to kind of get flaky and dusty, especially if I'm like ripping up my eyes a lot that day. So just be careful about that if you're someone who touches your eyes a lot, which we should all be trying not to touch our eyes or touch our face at all in the COVID era. But just in case you do, force of habit or whatever. Just know that it could potentially be like kind of dusty around your eyes. Um, where is my eyebrow stuff? Okay, um, as you all know, not good at eyebrows. Never gonna be. Don't plan to work on it ever. Um, I just use my Le Butte Fatale Brow Fix Tint Shaper Thingamajigger. Oh, I think I, oh, that's a bit much today, but that's fine. Not going anywhere. I don't really care what this looks like. Um, yeah, that's a bit much more than I usually use, but hey, we'll work with it. So I just use this to kind of fill, I guess. Just make them, make it actually look like I have eyebrows. <laughs> um, but I don't spend a whole lot of time shaping them and all that sort of stuff. Like I just, I don't have the time or the patience for any of that. Um, so that's it, that's all I do with my eyebrows. Um, I could probably do some more to fill in like right here just so it matches the other side. But like I said, I'm not going anywhere so I'm not gonna worry about it. It's actually, let me attempt to fix it and see what happens. Could, could just mess it up. Okay, that's a bit better. Without way too much effort. Okay. Um, cheek products. I actually forgot to even think about cheek products. This is a By Terry um, blush in number two. Flash Fiesta. I assume that's the number. Uh, I got this on from Beautylish. I forget why. I think I saw Mel Thompson maybe using this at some point. So I was like, eh, let me see what that looks like on my skin tone. Because clearly she and I are not the same skin tone. We're even close. But uh, I do like her reviews on products. So this is actually, this is not a blush brush. This is my uh, Sonia G No She Gave Pro. Um, chopping that into this uh, powdery stuff here. This is what it looks like. Hopefully it's all right on my skin tone. We shall see. Oh, okay, that's not bad. I thought it was going to be a lot more, um, I don't know, dusty looking or something. Just because I was just afraid of the 
how sort of light and almost pastel the color looks like, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It kind of melts with my skin tone, or maybe it melts with my um, bare minerals, <laughs> and it's like just not. It's not just sitting on top of my skin, which is a problem I have in general with my powder um, blushes, as opposed to. Uh, cream blushes. So I like cream blushes because they don't just look like they're just sitting on top of my skin. They actually like blend into my skin and so they look more natural to me than powder blushes. But this is not bad. It might be also a combination of using this particular um, brush, which is really, um, it's not super dense. It's really soft. And I think it's like putting the powder down in such a way that it's not just kind of caking a bunch of it in one place on my face. It's kind of um, it is more diffusing the color around. So I am liking this a lot. Also, it probably is lighter than I normally go to with my blushes, but this is a nice like summertime, daytime kind of blush look, I think. All right. I like that. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> and... For highlights, let's see, I think I want to use this as a highlighter today. This is, um, what is this? My Fenty Diamond Bomb in Cognac Candy. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to use my Sonia G Fan Pro. Let's get a little bit on there, kind of get that in this area. I like that. It's not too crazy. I'll just add a tish more. Tish a tish. Yep, there we go. There we go. That's exactly the amount I was going for. I like how it, this particular brush puts it down without like putting a bunch just right there. It kind of makes it nice and uh, soft looking, diffuse looking. Yeah. Words that I don't know how to use. <laughs> but hopefully you get my drift. All right, so far so good. I like what we've got going. Uh, I wanted to use my Laura Mercier um, translucent powder because I have not used this in a really long time, but I really love this powder. I came across it when I was doing something the other day and I was like, oh, I need to use that again. Um, the shade that I use is translucent medium deep. Um, so again, that's what it looks like. I'll attempt to have you see what the color looks like in the jar. There's that. Hopefully it's focused for you. Um, but yeah, I really like this powder. Uh, so as usual, I'm just going to take the amount that's inside the cap. And just swirl my brush around in that. And that's what the amount I'm going to use on my face. So I'm just going to put that everywhere to set my face. I feel like my nose is a bit shiny, so I'm going to take just a, just a chinky tad more. My nose. There we go. And I just love how <laughs> basically everything I have with Sonia G is just perfect. I like the way that it puts down products without plastering it onto your face. It's really nice. Really nice finishes. Uh, I think today I'm going to use my little sample size. Um, Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist as my setting spray. Okay, might be done. <laughs> oh dear, I don't like that. There we go. Hmm, I have a blemish that I did not notice. How dare you? How dare you sneak up on me? Oh well. Such is life. All right, I think I really like that. So this is the final look with all of that. And then I'll get into the lipstick colors. Um, so first I'll start by just looking at the different sizes. So I think these are a replacement for her previous lip balms. Oh, so first of all, what I'm talking about <laughs> is um, 
I'd gotten some of these uh, Divinal Lip Fetish Divinal Lip Shines. Ultra Brilliant something. Either way, um, these are like her new lip sort of gloss type things, um, lip balms. Uh, well, this one is called a lip balm and this one is called the Divino Lip Shine. But I believe that these are replacements to what was the previous uh, formulas of the uh, lip fetish lip balm. And what is this? Lip fetish, uh, lip fetish sheer color bombs. And so I'll just show you the colors that I have for these and tell you my thoughts on these. So this color of just the uh, sheer color balm is Wild Cherry. And you can see it has a little bit of pigmentation to it, but not a whole ton, which is nice. Uh, so I do use this one pretty often. And then the um, Astral one, this one is, what color are you? VR Pink Astral. And so that's that. And so these bullets are um, a tiny bit shorter and not as wide. And the shape of the lipstick themselves is a little bit different. So these are shaped like your traditional lipsticks, whereas these were just a little bit different, um, but they're both they're both great. Um, I will say that when I wear these, despite them being lip balms, I don't find them very um, moistening. I feel that they're kind of, I mean, they're not dry, they're not moistening, they're just kind of a neutral type of feel. Um, they're not matte, but they're not, I don't know, they're just not as moisturizing, I feel, as these are. So I much prefer this new formula compared to the previous ones. Um, but I do intend to continue using these because I do um, like them. Uh, I just love these, whereas I just like those. Uh, so in terms of the colors that I already had, I got two new colors for you to show you. Uh, but I'll show you the previous two colors I showed you before. This one is Love Interest. There's that. And then my other favorite one that I really like is Electric Lotus, which has more, um, it's more warm, kind of a peachy sort of color to it. So you see that one. And now I'm gonna open the other two that I have not had a chance to look at yet. So this one is one of the lip shine, divinal, whatever's. Um, this color is Bella Moore. Um, this is what the packaging looks like. And, it comes. Okay. and uh, before, you used, there used to be this little clasp with a string um, on these, and now it's just a, a photo of it. But I think it's still cute. It's just a little tab that goes in there, some closure. Well, it's still cute. All right, so this one is more of a sort of a mauve color. So this is the Bella Moore. You can see that's more of a sort of neutral sort of mauve shade. And then I did get one of the shiny ones. So this is the Golden Astral. And I got this one just because it's the most different from any of the previous. Oh, you can see the little bullet is shiny compared to the regular bombs. Um, it's pretty, all glittery. Um, so I was saying I got this one because it was the most different than her other lip products that I already have. And so, um, a lot of the other colors are very similar to things that I already have of hers on Pat McGrath. So I need to start swatching straighter. <laughs> it's, it looks straight to me this way. And then I turn my arm and it's totally like cattywampus. Um, so yeah, so there's that, that gold color. So actually let me start with this color on the lips just so you guys can see what that looks like since it's the least pigmented and we'll give you a true look at what this color looks like without a whole bunch of pink under it. In case 
you could probably wear this by itself. So this is what this color looks like on its own. And I rarely wear colors like this on their own. I usually put them over something else. But if I were going to wear it on their own, um, this is kind of the eye look that I would wear it on its own with. So I think that came out actually pretty good. So if you like, you know, less bright colors or less bright looks uh, for your lip color, this would probably be a pretty good option. So this again was, what were you, gold something? Gold Astral. All right, I'm gonna take this off. Uh, so before I use the other new shades, I will go ahead and put on these other colors for you just so you can see what those look like too. Uh, this was the original Balm in VR Pink Astral Lip Fetish Lip Balm. All right, so that's this color. I think I would like this a lot more with the um, Levine and Rose palette because it's a little bit more purpley. And so I think that this color would go better with that. But there you go. All right, and then the Wild Cherry color and the older formula for the bomb, just so you can see what that looks like. Go see, it's kind of, it's almost like a, um, a lip stain almost. So, it's like, it's creamy, but it almost feels like there's powder in it, is what I would say. So it's, I mean, again, it's like a neutral feel. It's like, it's not super moist. It's not, it's not matte. It just kind of feels like a bomb that has powder in it for some reason. In any case, that's what this looks like. This would be a good one to pair with like a lip liner if you want to give it a little bit more impact. But if you like just kind of like that um, lip stain type of look, it's a really nice color for that. If you want like red, but not too red. Not overpowering red. Which y'all know I like my super bright blue base reds but that's good for like a date you know not super made up day just kind of running to the store kind of thing all right so now i'll get into the other newer colors i'm gonna start with that bella Moore color so you can see what that looks like and i'll use the other two colors that i previously had I'm a little skeptical about this color but i do like it Now, it looks kind of, to me, it looks, well, I would say to me, it looks darker or deeper in the bullet, which obviously, but because of that, I think on my lips, it looks more pink than it does mauve like it does in the bullet. Like it's more of a neutral pink color on me. And so, here's that. All right, I love this formula again. Can't say that enough. I super love it. Okay, and then the previous colors that I've already had. Here's Love Interest, which you can see by comparison. It's pink, but warmer than the uh, previous colors of Bella Amore. Bella Amore, something like that. So there's that, and so that's this color as opposed to this color, which was the Bella Moore. All right, and lastly, my favorite one, Electric Lotus, still my favorite. So yeah, still my favorite color. It's the warmest of the three. Um, and as a bright winter, I normally wear more sort of blue base colors, but I think this color is fair. Uh, and I've been meaning to tell you guys what this whole, you know, color thing is all about. Um, and so this is my fan 
this is the colors that generally look best on me so this is my color palette um and so the things that i wear are typically in these colors now the the color that you wear doesn't necessarily have to be exactly a match to any of the squares on this it's just does that color sort of harmonize with the fan once you put the fan on it i'll do a whole separate video talking about how that works or whatever but just so that you guys can see what i'm talking about in terms of i like to wear a lot of like jewel jewel tones um, so that's where that winter, where that winter influence comes from. Um, but it, bright winters do have a spring influence. And so while like really like an orange color isn't necessarily part of our palette, you do have some sort of um, warmer shades, which I think is why I gravitate towards that electric lotus color. I think it goes pretty well with that. Um, there are all, all these lists of once you know your color um, palette, your per, if you have your personal color analysis done, there are all these lists of, you know, makeup that people will put together that you can find online of what, you know, what makeup goes with your uh, season. But I found that none of those lists work for me because they're all based on lips that are not pigmented. So, you know, a lot of, um, Women who are not women of color, their lips are just pink or, you know, just some other neutral beige color. Um, but my lips are obviously um, pretty pink to begin with on the bottom, and then they're brown essentially on the top. And so, um, when you put something that is not 100% opaque on your skin, then that kind of changes how that color performs on you. And so while all bright winters or all bright winter makeup should be the same, it's not really once it gets onto your skin. So whether it be for eyeshadow, lipstick, blush, whatever, uh, I find that those lists are not really helpful for me. So I actually have to swatch things and put them on in order for me to tell whether or not it's actually going to work for me as a bright winter. Um, clothing is different. Of course, it's usually opaque. And so what is bright winter on one person usually is bright winter on me. Sometimes my own undertones can kind of pull something more warm or more cool, um, but for the most part, it works. So that is my final look. I'm keeping on Electric Lotus, of course, because it's my favorite color. Um, and I think it does actually go really well with this eye look. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you already have the Golden Opulence um, palette, can let me know if you feel like the um, Rose Decadence. I keep forgetting all the names of these things. If it's worth getting that uh, separately. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Rose Decadence. <laughs> if it's worth it to get Rose Decadence separately for you as well. Um, but I really like this and I like them both. Uh, I think there's just, this one's a little bit more warm to me compared to the other one with that fuchsia flame color that pulls it a little bit more cool toned. Um, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, so please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about getting the Rose Decadence, um, in addition to the Golden Opulence, uh, palettes, okay? Uh, I hope you guys have a beautiful day.